you know, I, today's episode is brought to you by abuse, apparently. Because now we got to talk about Shangela. <laughs> and the fact that Miss Mama's out here still abusing people. Now, I did tell y'all the story about Dakota Payne. I remember I did hint at y'all that he did come out and alluded to some things. He had said little things here and there, but he didn't come out and fully say anything. So y'all already know I did a, um, I did a huge expose on Shangela and the abuse thing with Dengue McGarrigal. It has been dismissed with prejudice, which I think means, well, he can't speak about it anymore, but I do believe there was a settlement. And it's funny, just like that story, this story has not been covered by any of the blogs. I looked. I looked on Peak News. I looked on Out. I looked on Queerty. I looked on Pride. None of them have talked about it. Why? Because y'all all doing business with Miss LaQuifa Wadley. Y'all still out there doing business with DJ. And I believe every damn word because I'm going to tell you. It ain't just um, this story that um, I've been going on. So Daniel McGarrigal, oh, actually, he actually hit me up the other day and thanked me for the, for the thing. He sent me an email. We exchanged emails. We kept it moving. So. As far as the details, I'm keeping that to myself, but just know that Daniel and I have talked not too long ago. Also, um, and I shared it with some very close people that are in the industry that knows. So if they try me at anything, not him, but you know, Shangela, Miss Mamas, I'm ready to windmill that bitch. So we're gonna go and continue on this. This ain't got nothing to do with no damn bias, but I believe every um every word that's coming out. So let me get it together <laughs> and just be neutral. I'm trying to be neutral, Nancy here. So after that whole situation with Dang and McGarrigal, you know, there's been others that have come out and said stuff. Dakota Payne has alluded to some situations going on. He has confided in a couple of people that I know that have, and, and you know, in regarding this story, I'm not going to reveal who, but yeah, there's some people, and yes, they believe him. Even Bianca Del Rio was in the comments and was like, because they know each other and even gave her sympathies in regards to this situation. So he finally went and spilled the full tea on his Instagram. This came out last week. I have not heard anybody talk about it, but we're going to talk about it here. And then when I did my Dana McGar McGarrigal story, he actually liked the video, and I comment to him whenever he's ready to speak on this whole situation, let me know. He can come on here and do it. Even if he still doesn't want to do it, I'm glad that he came out and said his piece and came to peace and the terms what he said. So without further ado, I do want to play all this clip, and I will say this. He is the sixth victim that has come out and said that this is something that has hap happened to him. So even though I think it's ridiculous that we got to do trigger warnings, whatever, but it's a trigger warning. So let me give it to y'all because now we got to warn people about trauma. But I would think anything that has to do with something that's dark, y'all should know what's coming. So, yeah, let's take a gander over to his Instagram. Let's play the clip and then we'll come back and talk. Um, I wanted to do a little story time and get something off my chest. Last weekend, I was out in West Hollywood with some friends at a restaurant and I saw the person who sexually assaulted me getting sat on the back patio. So I took a moment, took a beat, gathered myself, and went up to his table and let him know, hey, I know what you did, and you know what you did, and I believe all those boys' stories, referring to the Rolling Stone article about them. He looked me in the eye and he said, I'm sorry you feel that way. So a little backstory. In 2017, I was a PA on the set of Hurricane Bianca 2. I'd gone out with the cast and crew a handful of times, you know, very excited to be around these popular drag queens and on set, you know, in New York City. Um, it wasn't until we had finished rapping and I went out with this one queen one-on-one -on -one, that I had this isolated experience where I came to in a hotel room with them and another person having sex with me. I don't remember getting there. I don't remember where it was. I don't remember if this person was an escort hiring them. Um, and that night I was made to feel like, oh, you wanted this, but you wanted this. Um, I also remember that night telling them, well, that felt a lot like work. Basically, if you're gonna treat me like a whore, pay me like a whore. Uh, this happened, I compartmentalized, swept it under the rug, you know, and it wasn't until the Rolling Stone article came out and I saw that there are so many other instances of sexual assault from this person. And so many people's stories were so similar to mine. And then, you know, I can't avoid them on social media. Even if I block this person, they're going to show up on um, a For You feed or, you know, um, they were just, 
at a ceremony for a bar in West Hollywood being marked as a safe space, hugging up on the owner. And so to the person who said, I'm sorry you feel that way. DJ, I'm sorry you feel the way that you do. I'm sorry that you were comfortable going into our crew spaces and that every place you go into, you kind of threaten the safety of the space. I'm sorry that your name is going to be synonymous for the deeds and all the projects you've had the opportunity of being on are gonna be tarnished. I'm sorry that you are not on a path of atonement and that whatever's happening with you is just festering. And I'm really sorry to all of the victims, to everyone whose body you violated. I'm sorry if they're not believed. I'm sorry if their trauma is being overshadowed by your popularity. So I'm sorry. Hi there. Okay. So yeah, there you have it. Dakota told his side of the story. And also, um, yeah, I believe every word he says, because like I said, that um, he had liked one of my, the story that I did on Daniel McGarrigal. And then I had commented on, well, whenever you feel the need to want to speak out, whatever, whatever, let me know. And then he hearted it, that sort of thing. So we left it there. But I'm glad that he came out and said his piece. Now, I do believe this because I have another friend. I don't necessarily know Dakota personally, but I know people who know him. I also, you know, he's good friends with Honey Davenport. Honey Davenport, I've known her for years, you know, back when she was out in New York as a DJ and stuff. And so we have a mutual friend in her and other people. Now, with that being said, um, there is another friend of mine who also does adult cinematography similar to Dakota Payne. I'm not going to re reveal his name because this is some anonymous stuff that he sent me as a message. He said that he has sold my art or whatever. It was a trigger that ignited within him and said that a lot of the similarities of what other people say has happened to him, that he was hanging out with some friends that were at a nightclub and you know, drinks were flowing, that sort of thing. And then all of a sudden he ended up in this place, didn't know how he got there, a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna reveal what he said. I mean, who it is because they said that, you know, they just not are not ready to come forward. So it's always, whenever you're ready to come forward, you can come forward and spill your tea. I'm not out here to be trying to out any of my friends or any of those other people because it's not my place to do that. My place is I am a messenger. I'm no, I don't make the news, I just report it. So. Whenever they're ready to come forward and say what they need to be said, then they'll say it. But they also feel that because they do sex work, that people go around not believing that, you know, S workers can also be violated and assaulted. And yes, you can be. Because as long as you say no, as long as it is not something that you agree to or co-sign on or want to do any kind of anything with a person that is assault that is violating someone's body and i wish a motherfucker would come up and say i sorry you feel like, oh really bitch you get a bottle across your damn face and then i might end up in jail like the brat so i guess that wouldn't be a, a good idea to do that but now you want to gaslight me and play in my damn face oh this is what we doing oh you want to go that way all right now we'll see if you know, I take your ass to court or whatever the case is, and then we'll see what we take from there. So I don't know necessarily where Dakota plans on going with the rest of this. But like I said, I'm glad that, you know, he has found a way to speak out and tell his truth and feel comfortable enough to say what he says. Now, I'm sure there's probably people out there that don't believe him. And that's fine because, you know what, when I reported on Daniel McGarrigal and the stuff that was going on with that, People didn't believe um, him either. And I'm like, you know what? That's fine too. You can believe whatever the hell you want to believe. But it's not up for you to decide what is the truth and what isn't the truth. So I've seen some comments on social media where, oh, shout out to Felix, because I see he wrote a comment. He said, I didn't know there was so many. Another person said, he looks really familiar. Is he a porn star? Yes, Dakota Payne is, does adult cinematography. Um, and people go, OMG, and she seems so nice. Most serial predators are. One of the things you have to realize when it comes to serial killers, abusers, anybody who plays into that sociopathic type of situation, it's the charming part that gets people. That sense of charm, that plays a lot into how people get you to trust them before they pounce. 
before they sink their hooves and their vampire teeth into the person. This is what they do. And somebody put, not Chandler in during her Diddy era. Child, she's been in there for a minute. But yeah, she's about to have, hopefully, you know, she'll get her just due. Somebody also said, this age of Aquarius has the industry in a chokehold. Another person said, opinions should be reserved. None of us were there and know the facts. Unfortunate situation. Absolutely. Another person said, Nasha Diddy. Oh, no, bitch. So, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Nasha Diddy. Okay. Now, we're going to end it on that. Because I feel like that's all we need to get. But yeah, so that's pretty much what I have on this story right now. Like I told you, I know somebody personally who went and had a similar situation. And people like, they didn't know that there was that many. Yes, there's six that have come forward. They did a whole expose on it on Rolling Stone. I'm sure if y'all haven't read it, you could definitely dig up the story. And they did an expose on her like they did with Diddy and so many others. You know, Rolling Stone good with, you know, full-on exposés when they try to put people out in these streets. So... We'll see what happens, but I will say shame on our community for continuing to work with someone who has all these, you know, strikes against them in regards of abuse and things that's going on. I just don't understand how y'all out here supporting her. Still, the, the blogs ain't said a word. Trash. A lot of y'all white media blogs who continue to protect her and don't bring these stories into fruition when there's a full video out on it and y'all should be reporting on it. So what y'all waiting for to get massive for People Magazine or Entertainment Tonight or Entertainment Weekly? You want one of them to get ahead of it for y'all to feel comfortable enough to speak out on this story? Is that what we need to do with this? Or is it that y'all trying to say, like, well, anybody could just come out and make an accusation. <laughs> so we're going to just take the diplomatic approach. <laughs> Whatever. But that's what we're here for. I'm just going to report the news and leave it up to y'all to make up your decision. So I say all this to say, what do y'all think of this story? Do y'all believe Dakota Fanning? Dakota Fanny? Do y'all do... Um, do y'all agree or believe Dakota Payne? I guess it's not really up to us whether or not if we believe her or not. It's just that, I mean, believe him. Is that, you know, when he told his story, he has a right to tell his story, and it's up to y'all to just determine what it is. So let me know what your thoughts are in this story in the comments down below, because I'm sure that this is going gonna, is, is gonna to be more coming out as things progress, because abusers don't just do it one time and stop. They keep doing it and doing it and doing it until eventually they get caught. And it's funny how you always be slipping the overall arc between so many people, Bill Cosby, um, the Didla and Shangela, the common denominator is drugs, slipping things in people's drinks and this, that, and the other, and all of a sudden you blank out, and then you find that's, I guess, the only way Mighty Mouse can top a bitch is by drugging them. So, let me know what you guys think of this story in the comments down below.